chair yoga is generally geared towards older yogis. For people that are in a little bit in need of support, need of balance, don't have the opportunity to really get down on the mat maybe because of injuries or arthritis. So it gives them a chance to be in a chair, learn the postures, take advantage of the mindfulness, absolutely, the breath awareness, the stretch, and also creates this great support system and helps them deal with the issues of getting around through life in a daily way. Absolutely, and you can use all angles of the chair. It's amazing, we use the back of the chair for balance, practicing our warriors. We can use the chair seated on forward folds. Mm -hmm. We can twist in our chairs. There's so much we can do. It's a wonderful practice. It's actually a great opportunity to take advantage of some of these postures for someone who's sitting in a chair for a long time yes. or someone who's in a car and at the end of the day just needs to move around because yeah. they're so you know, stuck from yeah. being immobilized. Great point. Gentle Chair Yoga. My name is Amy DeLillo. I'm a yoga teacher and yoga therapist of 20 years, and I appreciate your presence here in class today. So we're going to enjoy a very gentle uh, chair yoga class. As with all styles of yoga and most practices in our lives, I'll encourage you to stay in the safe range of motion that's available to you within your body. Listen to your body. And if that phrase sounds odd to you, it just means to notice how you're feeling in your body as we move through all of these practices. I will give a number of different options to help you to find uh, a place to be. There's always a place to be within your yoga practice. Um, if there isn't then a place for you that I'm offering, let me know because I certainly can offer extra support. If you are uh, more petite in stature and your feet are not naturally touching the mat, you can use yoga blocks if you have them. Otherwise, if you're practicing from home, you can feel free to use books and simply place them beneath the soles of the feet. Our goal here is to try to bring our knees and our hips into alignment. So if your feet are touching the floor or the mat, and that's available to you, then you're fine right there. What you need for this practice are possibly blocks or books at home, Maybe a mat, but you can practice on a safe floor surface that is not slippery or too uneven. You will want to use a chair that has a flatter seat as opposed to one that scoops down because that can create uh, some challenges in bringing our bodies into alignment. Preferably also a chair that does not have arms on the sides because we'll move into some options where you can adjust your legs if you wish. Um, also with clothing, in practicing yoga, you want to wear clothing that you can feel comfortable and free to move in helps you to move within your range of motion. So with that in mind, let's begin. Let's make sure that our sitting bones, the bones we sit upon, are pressing equally into the mat, or the chair. We may wish to rock from one sitting bone to the other. And then find our way to even pressure within our sitting bones. Let's bring our shoulders over our hips, and our ears over our shoulders. Lift through the crown, which is the very top of our heads, and also a natural extension of our spine. Let's bring our awareness back down to our hips and align our hips with our knees. Bring our heels beneath our knees and our toes are pointed forward here. Let's allow our hands to soften on our legs if that feels good. Another option is to bring our hands into a pose for our hands called Anjali Mudra. So we can find this by pressing the palms into one another our fingertips are pointed skyward. We may wish to place our thumbs gently pressing at heart center. But hands on the legs is fine as well. If you are comfortable, gently close your eyes. Know that you're in a safe space here. And allow for your mind to begin to float over your body. Simply observing what you're feeling, where you're feeling it, without judgment. A simple observation. So maybe you are starting at your crown, bringing your attention, your awareness to the very top of your head, and allowing for your awareness to sweep across the scalp and the front of the face. Softening your eyes and nose and jaw. Softening through the throat and shoulders. 
down the arms, using just enough effort to hold our hands right where they are. Allow awareness to soften across the front of your torso, front of the legs, right down to your toes. And then bringing awareness back up to your crown again. Softening along the back of the scalp, the sides of the head and ears. Softening shoulders, back of the torso. Our gluteals and down the backs of our legs. Also softening through the soles of the feet. Invite ease into your body, right where you are. Perhaps your hands will stay right where they are, or maybe you'll turn your palms inward at heart center. Still keeping eyes closed if that's a comfortable choice. Tuning in and setting our sankalpa, which is a Sanskrit word that means deeply held intention. So maybe our intention today is to try something new. Or maybe it's one of creating peacefulness in our mind and body. Maybe it's one of ease. Whatever you choose, turn it into a statement. I create ease in my mind and body. I am peaceful. I am curious. Whatever is available or of interest to you today. our sankalpa three times within our minds. It's like planting a seed. We're not changing our breath yet, but let's feel our breath moving through the very top of our ribs right here. And then maybe we'll keep our hands here or perhaps we'll bring one hand to the belly and another hand to our side ribs or maybe our lower back ribs. As we move into three-part breath, or pranayama, which is another Sanskrit word for a specific way to breathe. So three-part breath is also called diaphragmatic breathing. So to the best of our abilities, we'll inhale and exhale through our nasal passages. As we inhale again, press your belly away from your spine. Feel your lower lung lobes. Feel your upper lung lobes, and then exhale in reverse, ending with a squeeze of your belly towards the spine. Inhaling, filling belly, lower lungs, upper lungs. Exhaling in reverse with a gentle squeeze of the belly towards the spine. If we're not sure if we're directing our breath deeply into our lungs, feel free to move your hands. Sometimes using our sense of touch on different parts of our muscles and bones of respiration can help us to direct our breath to move more deeply into our bodies. So I'll continue to encourage you, to invite you to practice your three-part breath throughout your class, throughout this time and beyond. It's a very healthy way to breathe, a very calming way to breathe. As we next exhale, let's release our arms out to our sides. Feel free to close your eyes at any time throughout your practice. You can also open your eyes gently if you wish. As we next inhale, let's swan dive our arms by sweeping them back and up to the sky within your range of motion. As you exhale, reverse swan dive the arms back and then down. Move in your range of motion. So that might mean you're moving just up to shoulder height, or maybe it's all the way up above the head. As we're swan diving, we want to activate and open through the front of heart center, activating a squeeze right between your shoulder blades. We may wish to keep our torso high here if that's feeling good. Otherwise, as we exhale, we can sweep our arms forward onto our thighs, hinging at our hips, inhaling, lifting our torso skyward. 
as we swan dive our arms sky. Seated, flowing, forward folds. We may wish to deepen this expression by sweeping our hands, our fingers above our toes. So make this practice your own. We're inhaling on the way up. We're exhaling on the way down. Notice any shifts or changes in your body. Maybe we're beginning to create some internal heat just through our motion, through our breath. So unless we are congested, it's best to try to breathe in and out through the nasal passages. But if you're congested, you can breathe however you need to. Let's meet on our next inhalation. However we get there, reaching our arms as high as they will comfortably go, that might be at shoulder height, maybe it's higher. As we next exhale, let's bring our palms together, exhaling hands down the center line of the body. Let's soften our shoulders, lift through the crown, the very top of the head again. Let's notice if we can soften through our jaw. Perhaps even opening our lower jaw and gliding our jaw from right to left. And then coming back to center, to neutral. Gently seal and softly, softly seal your lips. Soften the shoulders, lift through the crown again. As we next inhale, let's revolve our palms to face the sky. Perhaps our fingertips will touch or maybe we'll interlace our hands. You decide. Let's exhale and release our arms out to the side. Spread your fingers nice and wide for the webbing between the fingers. Let's find our palms connecting right in front of our bellies. Pressing up, fingertips uh, touching or maybe fingers intertwined. Exhale outward and downward. Let's imagine here as we're flowing our arms, as we're pressing out and down, that we're pressing through something thick, like maybe thick molasses. Arms are active, reaching away from heart center. Fingers spread nice and wide. Let's meet the next time our arms, our hands are lifted. Let's soften through our shoulders. Now mirror teach you from here. So releasing your left hand, release that down onto your hip. The opposite palm can reach the sky. Our gaze is forward or maybe skyward. Let's inhale and reach both of our arms skyward, softening the shoulders. And we'll alternate on the breath, exhaling as we arc to the side, inhaling as we lift. This is your practice, so move on your own breath. Inhalations lifting us, our exhalations arcing our bodies to the side, creating this beautiful stretch opportunity through the side of the ribs into your armpits. We can stay right here, however, if we'd like a deeper stretch, we can slide our downward hands on the side of the chair, keeping the core muscles active as we're lifting our torso and releasing it down. And let's find balance on both sides, meeting again at center, lifting through the crown and fingertips, softening our shoulders. Let's circle through our wrist as we sweep our arms to the sides and then down allowing our hands to gently rest or land on our legs. Let's ensure that we have space between our back body and the back of the chair. We can, uh, maybe we're walking forward just a bit. If we're making any adjustments, realign shoulders over hips, hip to knee alignment, knee to heel alignment. Lifting through the torso. With a long straight spine, honoring the natural curves of our lower back, we're honoring the natural curve through our cervical, spine or neck region, we're going to move into cat and cow. So as you exhale, scoop your belly in, tucking the chin in, stretching through the back of the spine. As we next inhale, our front body is reaching forward, gaze skyward, squeeze between the shoulder blades. Let's move between cat back, spine stretching back as we exhale, and cow back, belly forward, gaze. Stay 
stay in tune with your body, connecting our breath with our motion. And let's find balance on both angles of our cat and cow, realigning shoulders over hips, ears over shoulders. Let's bring our hands to heart center, returning to Anjali Mudra, keeping our tailbone and crown in alignment. As we inhale, let's lift through the crown. As we exhale, twist to the side, either side. Allow your gaze to come along on that twist. Inhaling forward with our gaze and torso. Exhale, twisting to the opposite side. Let's move here on the breath. Moving our spine within this beautiful twist, within our own range of motion. Maybe we'll try a few rounds keeping our gaze forward, allowing for a different stretch opportunity through the neck, and throat, and shoulders. Notice what you're feeling and where you're feeling it. And feel free to smile within your practice. <laughs> it helps to uh, exercise the muscles of our face. forward facing. Let's soften our shoulders, lifting through the crown. Let's release our hands onto our legs. Those of you who are using blocks or maybe books at home, feel free to place those out to the side and then lift and plant your feet upon any prop that you may wish to use. If we're not using a block or books beneath our feet, we can walk our feet heel toe, heel toe, outward to get a comfortable placement for your body. Let's make sure we are comfortably uh, positioned within our chair, that we still have some space between our spine and the back body, that our knees are pointed outward, we have knee to heel alignment, and all of our toes are pointed away from our heel. Realign your shoulders over your hips, keeping the knees pressing outward. We'll slide our hands onto the belly of the muscles, so the middle part of our quadriceps here. With our spine long, Let's move into a few cat and calves from this position. Inhaling, belly forward, gaze to the sky. Exhaling as we scoop our belly, stretching through the spine. Let's meet again with a nice long spine, softening the shoulders back and down. Let's check in with our breathing. So let's notice if we're still three-part breathing, or maybe we've lost sight of our breath, which happens. So our practice of yoga is a moving meditation. And part of that is to stay in touch with what we're doing. So we're always breathing throughout our practice. Maybe we'll bring a hand back onto the belly, maybe another onto the side or back ribs, inhaling, pressing the belly away from the spine, feeling lower, and then upper lungs. Exhaling in reverse, ending with a squeeze of the belly towards the spine. Keep the knees pressing outward. We're opening through our hips just by placing our body within a seated straddle split to the Let's Next exhalation, let's release our hands onto our thighs. Again, we'll come to the middle part of our legs, keeping our legs outward stretched. As we next inhale, sweep your left shoulder towards your right knee, then torso sinks down the center, and then right shoulder towards the left knee as we lift our torsos back up. Inhale, shoulder towards opposite knee, across, and then back up. Keep the sitting bones connected to the seat of the chair. Allow for the knees to stay pressing outward. Safe in our bodies, safe in our joints. And let's meet the next time our shoulders and our hips are aligned. 
lifting through the crown. And as you're ready on your next inhalation, let's sweep our torso in the opposite direction. So this version of Sufi swirl or torso sweep is really good for our shoulders, for our lower back, and also for our midsection and all of our muscles of respiration and digestion digestion and elimination. So helping our body, all of our systems to function with ease. Let's meet the next time our shoulders and hips are aligned, taking our time to get there. Let's lift through our crowns and then walk our feet back to hips distance apart. If we've been using uh, blocks or books, we can just leave those off to the side. So for some of us, uh, we may wish to stay seated as we move into some warriors. Others may wish to come to standing. So those of you who would prefer to come to seated, you can keep your chair right where it is. I'll adjust mine so it's in the same position. You want the very end of your chair to be pointing forward, and this allows you a little more space move your legs. So if you're going to come to a seated position, adjust the chair. For those of us who are coming to seated, we're going to take our front knee. You'll keep your front knee pointed towards the front wall. In your back leg, maybe the knee will point downwards, maybe it will step back, or maybe we're keeping it a little bit closer to the front leg. All of us are keeping our torso, our gaze forward. So adjusting our bodies. Keeping the right hand on the chair if we're seated. Left hand can just hang down or maybe come to our hip. If we are coming to the chair, we can come to standing. Feet hips distance apart and our hands on the chair. So I'm going to use my hands to simulate the chair so you can still see my limbs as we adjust our bodies. So those of you who are seated, have your legs positioned in a seated chair, warrior one. And you can feel free to stay right there, moving your back leg in a position that's comfortable with your range of motion. Those of us who are standing, create equality of weight between both feet. Shift your weight onto your right foot and lift the left heel. As you're ready, step the left foot back, and that might just be an inch or two, or maybe it's a wider stance, keeping hands on the chair, if that's a comfortable place for us to be. So we're keeping our feet hips distance apart if we're standing. Our rear heel is slightly inward turned. Our front knee is bent and over the front heel. Let's guide our hip bones to forward facing within our range of motion. Let's restack our shoulders over the hips. If we're seated in the chair, let's keep our right hand on the chair. If we're standing, we can keep both hands on the chair, or maybe we're lifting just our left arm. We can come to the side or up to the sky. Maybe we're lifting both arms if that's a safe place for us to be. Stay in your range of motion. Let's soften the shoulders and lift through the crown. Notice if we've lost track of our three-part breath. Let's come back to that. Lifting our bellies away from the spine, feeling lower lungs, feeling upper lungs. Keeping a hand or two on the chair is a wonderful option if that gives us a greater feeling of stability. Let's keep our shoulders soft. Maybe we're opening our heart centers here, squeezing between our shoulder blades. Let's keep our gaze forward if that creates more stability for us, or maybe we're lifting our gaze to the sky, adding a very gentle back bounce. Keep the breath deep and smooth. Let's gently exhale and release any back bounce. Let's bring one hand, let's bring the left hand onto the hip and keep the right hand up on the chair. Keeping our front leg bent, as we exhale, let's hinge or bend through our hips. So our spine is staying long, honoring our natural curves. The front leg is bent, 
our core, our midsection, is engaged here. Be mindful of the chair in front of you so we don't accidentally bump our heads. Hinging forward, shoulders are likely a little higher than our hips, or maybe we're finding shoulder to hip alignment. Breathing into our bodies. Moving from our core as we inhale, let's lift our torso. Restacking our shoulders over our hips. Let's keep the right hand on the side of the chair, maybe the chair in front of us. And maybe, and we can keep both hands there if that feels better, maybe we're bringing the fist of our left hand to the lower back. Our thumb is pointed inward, avoiding the spine. We can add another back bend lifting our hearts. We can keep our gaze forward, or maybe our gaze is coming to skyward. Maintaining the three parts of our breathing. And let's exhale and release any back bends. Good. Let's release our hands either onto the chair or onto our hips. Those of you in standing can stay there for a couple of breaths. Those of you who are seated, we're going to shift our bodies into warrior two. So for your warrior two, your right leg will stay forward just as it is. Left leg can stay where it is, but we're opening our torso to the left. So right knee to hip alignment. Our right hand can be on the chair, left hand on the leg, or maybe the back of the chair. But we're opening our torso to the side, stacking our shoulders over our hips. Lovely. If we're standing at our chair, our right leg is still forward. Let's bring both of our hands to the chair and step our left foot back just a little bit wider. And then open our torso to the left. Our right knee will stay over the heel. Our left foot is stepped out in an angle that is comfortable for our bodies. So we are opening our hips to a forward facing position. Let's all take a peek at our front knee, bringing our front knee over the heel. Realigning our shoulders over our hips, lifting through the crown, and then casting our gaze over the right shoulder. This is creating a nice stretch through our neck and throat. So if we're seated, our hands can grasp on to any part of the chair that's available to us. Keeping the breath deep and smooth. If we have a chair in front of us, we can always keep our front hand here. Or maybe we're elevating our back arm up and out at shoulder height. And if we're comfortable, maybe we're lifting our front arm as well. So stay in a place that's safe for you, where you feel stable in your pose that we're maintaining the three parts of our breath, that our crown, the top of the head, is lifted, and in this pose, revolving our gaze beyond our front fingertips. Shoulders are soft. Feel your breath move through the midsection of your body. Next, exhale. Let's release our hands onto our legs or the chair. So those of you standing, you can enjoy your bodies right here in your breath. Those of us who are seated, hinge your torso forward. Bring your front hand onto your front leg. Or maybe it's your forearm. Those of us who are standing, let's glide our torso forward. Front hand can stay on the tall back of the chair. Front hand can come to our thigh. Or maybe our forearm comes on to the middle parts of our front quadriceps. So we're still keeping our hips open. Our top shoulder is stacked over the bottom shoulder. Our front leg is still bent. We're creating a stretch opportunity along the side of the rib cage. Our gaze can be downward. This is a very grounding uh, direction to gaze in. So if we're feeling at all unstable, this is the best direction to look in. Maybe we're looking forward. Maybe we're looking skyward. Our top arm can stay on the body. Maybe we're reaching skyward through the elbow, through the fingertips, perhaps up and over the top side of your head. 
imagine a wall behind you that both of your shoulders are pressing into. Let's keep our breath deep and slow. Let's release our top arm, bringing it back onto our skyward facing hand. Keeping our core, our midsection engaged, let's lift our torso, hand coming onto the thigh, maybe onto the chair as we readjust our shoulders over our hips. And let's begin to make our way back to forward facing. And we're going to shift our weight onto the front knee. Find, find the rear heel coming forward, the rear toes coming forward, and making our way back to mountain stance. So those of you standing, find equality of weight between both of your feet. Heel to hip alignment, hip to shoulder alignment, softening the shoulders down. Those of you who are in chair pose, feel free to bring all of your knees pointing forward. And we're going to move your chairs, or actually I'm going to bring another chair to you. So if you're practicing at home, you can simply shift and face the other direction. For those of us here in class, we're just going to shift our body onto another chair. Or, I'll just move your chair for you. <laughs> All right, so if we're standing by our chairs, we're in mountain stance which is feet hips distance apart at the very top of the mat. If we're in our chair, we're facing forward as well. All of our knees pointed towards the front of the room. Good. If we're seated within our chairs, we're going to keep our left leg positioned where it is, and then step our right toes back a little bit, maybe a lot. And our left knee is pointed towards the window wall. So making sure we're in a safe space with our bodies, our left hand will stay on the chair. Maybe our right hand is down on the inner chair as well. Stacking shoulders over the hips and ears over shoulders. Those of us who are standing, we establish your mountain stance, feet, hips distance apart. Let's find our drishti, which is a, a Sanskrit word for focal point. Not choosing another movable human, choosing a spot that will not Keeping our gaze there, shifting our weight to the left foot. Let's begin to peel the right heel, maybe the whole of the right foot, and gently stepping back. Maybe it's just a few inches, maybe it's longer. So find a stance that's comfortable for you, a place to be where you can reconnect shoulder to hip alignment. Find your front knee pointing towards the window wall, Good. Lifting through the crown, through the very top of the head. So with our alignment here, our front knee is staying over the front heel. We're restacking shoulders over hips, lifting through the crown, keeping our hand on the chair, the side of the chair, maybe the tall back of the chair. So maybe from here, as our body is coming into this stable foundation of warrior one, maybe we're lifting through our torso and adding a gentle back bend, opening our hearts, squeezing between the shoulder blades. Hands can stay on the chair. Maybe we're lifting our gaze up to the sky. Notice if you can soften your jaw and reduce any efforting that you may be creating through your shoulders. Let's gently release any back bends. We might choose to keep our left hand on the chair. Maybe we're lifting our right arm, perhaps just to shoulder height, with a half cactus arm. Maybe we're lifting skyward, keeping the shoulders soft. We feel comfortable and safe here. Maybe we're lifting both arms. Either way, our feet are our foundation, our toes on the back foot if we're seated in the chair. Lift through the crown, soften the shoulders. Let's bring our hands to heart center. 
and then hands coming either onto our front leg if we're seated in the chair, on the tall back of the chair if we're standing, keeping the lower half of our body stable. Let's hinge through our hips and release the torso forward. So hands can stay on the tall back of the chair. Keep reaching your crown away from your tailbone. Our spine and torso are long and strong. Our front knee is over the heel. Our jaw is soft. Let's keep the three parts of our breath smooth and neat. Next inhalation, moving from our core, let's lift our torso, restacking our shoulders over our hips. Hands on the chair or perhaps at our sides, realigning our shoulders and hips here. We can always keep a hand on the chair. Maybe we're activating another back bend, lifting and opening through the front body, or maybe we're bringing our right fist to the lower back and lifting and opening here with a gentle pressure of our right fist, gently pressing to the right of the spine on the lower back, avoiding the spine itself. As we exhale, let's release our back bend, bringing hands onto the chair, maybe onto our hips. Those of us who are standing in warrior one, let's stay there enjoying our breath. Those of us who are seated in the chair, we'll open our bodies, into a warrior two. So our front left leg will stay where it is. We're opening our torso to the right. Maybe we're widening the placement or position of our right leg. So staying in the safe zone here, opening, restacking shoulders over hips, keeping our left knee over the left shoulder. Or excuse me, left knee aligned with the left hip. <laughs> Good. All right, wonderful. Those of us who are standing, we're going to open our bodies, our torso to the right. So our left knee stays over the left heel. We'll gently widen our stance. So our right heel now is the furthest point away from the body. Our left hand can stay on the front thigh or maybe it's up on the tall back of the chair for those of us who are standing. Let's elongate the spine. Arms can stay close in or maybe we're reaching just the back arm, maybe our front arm as well. So notice how your body feels within this pose. Restack your shoulders over your hips, lift through the crown, and allow your gaze, your neck and throat to revolve into this twist, gazing beyond your front fingertips. Keep the breath deep and smooth here. Notice if you can reduce the efforting through the shoulders or jaw perhaps. staying here, if this feels good and comfortable and opening for us, or maybe we'd like to explore our extended angle where we're gliding our torso forward, perhaps releasing our front hand onto the thigh, or maybe it's the forearm if we're seated in the chair or standing. Those of us standing, maybe our front hand is resting or grasping onto the tall back of the chair. We're gliding our torso from the midsection forward. Stacking our top shoulder over the bottom shoulder. Reaching our crown away from the tailbone. And let's find a downward gaze. It's very grounding for our minds and for our bodies. Three part breathing. Moving from our midsection, as we next inhale, let's lift our torso. Hands can stay on our legs, our hips, maybe arms are reaching out, perhaps we're grasping onto the chair. Those of us who are seated can stay right there. If we're standing, let's bring our hands onto our hips, shifting our weight onto the front foot, bringing the back heel and back toes to forward facing as we're ready. Maybe taking two or three steps as we make our way to the top of the mat. 
those of us who are seated. Let's release our hands down. Maybe we're using our right hand to help guide our right leg to forward facing. We'll all come to a seated position again, facing the front of the room where my chair is. So let's take a moment to reposition our chairs so that the seat is facing the front of the room. We still have some space between the back of our body and the back of the chair. So as we come here, we're finding heel to knee and knee to hip alignment, hip to shoulder alignment, ears gently gliding above the shoulders and lifting through the crown. From here, we'll work on some seated spinal balance. So within this practice, we're going to activate our core, the muscles of our midsection. So not just the front, but the side and the back muscles as well. So lifting through the crown, actively engaging the core and the midsection of the body. We'll work on opposite sides of the body, which is great exercise for our brain as well. Mm -hmm. So as we're ready, we're going to lift one arm and the opposite leg. So you decide, one arm and the opposite leg. Shoulders are soft. Let's exhale and release down. And we'll inhale up on the opposite side. So lifting one arm and the opposite leg. And let's flow this on the breath, inhaling as we elevate opposite limbs, exhaling on the way down. Our spine is staying long throughout this flow. We're lifting our legs and arms within our own range of motion. Let's notice here if we can spread between our fingers and our toes, creating some space through the webbing between fingers and toes. Let's actively try to point our toes skyward as we're elevating our legs alternately. Keeping the core engaged, keeping our breath smooth, let's meet on this elevation. Soften the shoulders, elongate the spine. Elevating to your degree, Let's add some circling through our wrist and elevated ankle. And then let's pause and circle in the other direction. Same limbs, circling the other way. And then let's pause, still lifting. Let's spread our fingers and toes. And then as you exhale, make a fist with your hand and with your elevated foot. So squeezing, squeezing the toes in. Let's inhale and stretch toes and fingers. Exhale and squeeze. One more time. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Exhale, squeeze. Let's reach our fingers and toes out. Now as we exhale, let's release our limbs. Ah, softening down. Remember which side you just did. We're going to do a few cat and cows. Let's exhale, scoop the belly in, stretch through the back of the spine. Inhale, cow back, belly forward, gaze skyward, stretching the front of the spine. Let's move on the breath. A few more breaths here. So our cat and cow stretches are so healing and lubricating for our spine. I encourage you to try to do uh, at least one of these poses, maybe two, every day. So maybe it's cat and cow. These go very nicely together. Let's come back to a nice long spine, restacking shoulders over hips, lifting through the crown. Remember which side you balanced before. And now we'll come to the other side. So inhaling up with opposite limbs, shoulders are soft. And if you're not sure, maybe you'll lift and go, mm, this leg feels it, maybe I'll do the other side. Soften shoulders, lift through the crown. Notice if you can spread fingers and toes. And now let's circle through our elevated limbs. Maintaining the three parts of our breath. And let's pause and circle in the other direction. And 
And then let's pause again, spreading the space between fingers and toes. As we exhale, make a fist with your hand and your foot. Inhale, release and stretch. Let's exhale and squeeze. Inhale, release and stretch. Good. Exhale, squeeze. One more time, inhale, stretch. Then let's exhale, softening our legs, our arms, back down onto the mat, or onto our legs. So let's gently straighten our legs. So again, if we're using um, a book or blocks, we can take those out to create an elevation for our heels. If our heels comfortably touch the floor space, then let's keep our legs outstretched here. So our toes might be pointed skyward, they might be pointed down, whatever is available to you. Let's walk our sitting bones a little closer to the front of the chair. However, we want to make sure that we are uh, staying stable and safe within our chair. We'll move into a seated forward fold. So we do want to be safe first and avoid tipping over in the chair. So your sitting bones are maybe at the center of the seat, maybe slightly ahead of that. So let's lift through our crown. Our torso will stay long. We're hinging through our hips here. As we exhale, releasing our torso forward. So it doesn't matter if we only go a half an inch. If we're feeling that stretch, that's where we'll want to stay. We want to avoid applying any pressure to our knees. So if we're hinging forward more deeply, maybe we're taking our hands on a walk down the legs. Avoiding the knees, we may pause our thighs, our shins. Maybe our hands are walking to our ankles. Maybe we can even touch our toes. As long as we're creating a long stretch through the spine, avoiding a cat back here. So spine is long. Keep the crown reaching away from your tailbone. We're still breathing. Even though we're holding our bodies within this pose, we're still breathing into our bodies. We want to feel our bellies, our lungs and ribs moving with each inhalation, releasing with each exhalation. Keeping our core active, let's move from our midsection, lifting our torso. So our torso stays in a nice long line. We're taking our hands on a walk back up our legs. If we're feeling any dizziness at all, we can pause at a half bend. Comfortable making our way to shoulders over hips. Let's make our way there. Let's bend our legs again, creating heel to knee alignment. And come into a held back bend. So this is our camel pose. So for some of us, we may wish to take our fists to the lower back. Thumbs are pointed in, we're avoiding our spine. Another option is to grasp onto either the seat or the back of the chair if that's available to you in the chair that you're seated in. Either choice, we'll squeeze between our shoulder blades, we'll open heart center. Maybe we're keeping a forward gaze, or perhaps we're lifting our gaze skyward. Let's maintain the three parts of our breath, continuing to squeeze the shoulder blades, actively lifting hearts forward and skyward. Our gaze forward and skyward as well, keeping the back of the neck soft. Long and lifted, gently arced but soft. Perhaps we'll keep our mouth in neutral, or maybe we'll open our mouth slightly and glide our lower mandible from right to left again. Yoga for our face, creating some space through our face and jaw. Let's come back to center. Sealing our lips here, maintaining the three parts of our breath through the nasal passages. Let's gently release our back bones. Let's come on to the thighs, realign your shoulders over hips, ears over shoulders. We'll come into a held side body stretch now. So I'll mirror teach you from here, so you'll be stretching through your left rib cage. So your right hand will stay on your thigh, or maybe it will come to the side or leg of the chair as we move more deeply into the side stretch. So release your left arm alongside you. 
As we inhale, we'll sweep the arm to the side and up. Maybe we're feeling a stretch through the armpit and side ribs here, in which case we can stay. If we have a little more space available, imagine a wall that's right behind you. We'll keep our shoulder blades gliding into that. Maybe we're moving to the side a bit more. This is where we may want to take the right hand and grasp onto the seat or maybe the leg of the chair. We're still breathing into this side stretch. Our gaze can be in neutral, it could be downward, or maybe it's skyward. Allow your head to move in a way that creates a stretch opportunity for your neck and foot. Next exhalation, let's come back to center. Realign shoulders over here. Let's take a moment as we exhale, let's close our eyes or just soften them and notice any variation, any difference from one side of your body compared to the other. Gently opening our eyes, let's prepare to create this stretch on the other side. So taking your right palm facing away from the chair, let's inhale outward, upward. Maybe we're feeling enough here or maybe we're activating the side body stretch. You decide. Allow the backs of your shoulders, shoulder blades, to glide along this imaginary wall behind us. Our crown is still a natural extension of the spine, adjusting our head into a twist. Feels good. Opening, awakening to our neck, Breathing into our side body stretch. Moving from our midsection, let's release and come back to center. Bringing hands onto our legs, ensuring that we have space between our back body and the back of the chair. Let's do a few cat and cows here. Exhaling, scooping the belly, inhaling belly forward, gaze to the sky. And let's come back to center. Shoulders over hips, ears over shoulders, lifting through the crown. Next, we'll move into a seated spinal twist and we'll hold this pose as well. Let's bring hands to heart center. So this is our Anjali Mudra, our pose for our hands. Perhaps we're allowing our thumbs to rest at heart center. Lift through the crown. I'll mirror teach you here as well. So inhale, lift through the crown. As you exhale, twist to your left. Tail and crown stay in alignment. Perhaps you're comfortable with your hands at heart center. Or maybe you'll release your hands to the outside of your left leg, using your hands to make contact with the leg to perhaps deepen your twist. Or maybe your back uh, left hand is reaching to the seat or maybe the back of the chair and grasping there if that helps you to activate a slightly deeper. Keep lifting through your crown. Perhaps your head will stay right where it is. Option two is to move your head on the breath, exhaling, looking over one shoulder, inhaling, looking over the other. Maybe as you're moving your head and exploring your range of motion, perhaps you'll notice if one direction feels like it's more enticing to you or more open. Staying in that pain-free zone, but allowing for either a flow or maybe a held placement in the direction of your gaze. Let's allow for our next exhalation to release all of our twists, coming back to forward facing. Bringing hands back to Anjali Mudra at heart center. So notice any difference. Maybe we're closing our eyes to do this. Any variation from the right side to the left sides of our body. As you're ready, softly opening our eyes, keeping tail and crown aligned. Inhale and elongate your spine. As you exhale, twist to your right. 
within your range of motion, so it may be a little different on this side. Hands can stay at our hearts. Perhaps we're releasing our hands uh, to different positions on the outer leg. Or maybe our right hand is grasping on to the seat or lower back of the chair. Keep reaching through your crown as if there was a string gently woven through the spine, lifting up and out through the top of the head. Our head can stay in neutral in either direction, or maybe we're flowing in the direction of our gaze. One space to the other. Let this practice be your own. exhalation into a release of all of our twists. Our gaze is forward, hands are forward. And here perhaps we're finding our fingers connected, maybe we're intertwining our fingers. Either way we'll press our palms skyward. Arms might stay bent or maybe we're straightening them in whatever option feels best. Let's keep shoulders soft, lift through the crown. As we exhale, let's release our hands, circle through your wrists, outward and downward allowing your hands to land or float onto the legs. We'll come into a seated Shavasana. So maybe we'll stay here or perhaps we'll walk or slide our sitting bones towards the back of the chair. If we're practicing at home, we can feel free to come recline uh, on a couch or on the floor. Maybe we're sliding our hands closer to our thighs. Palms might come to skyward facing. Whatever allows you to soften through the shoulders. Now we'll return to our own natural breath and allow for our minds to just watch the movement of our breath. So let's softly close our eyes here. Allowing the mind to follow the movement of the breath. Observing if perhaps it's a little different than it was at the start of class. allow now for our mind to return to our crown, the very top of the head. And let's allow for our awareness to have a softening, ease-inviting sensation as we sweep our awareness from our crown across the whole of the top of the head, softening through the scalp, the back of the neck. Finding ease across the forehead and nose and cheeks. Finding ease along the ears and jaw. And softening through our lips and mouth. Finding ease through the throat. And a softness from our throat across the shoulders and down our arms, all the way to the tips of our fingers. Inviting ease through our shoulders again. And allowing for that ease to melt across the whole of the torso, the front and sides and back of the torso. Inviting peacefulness here. Inviting ease through the hips, the glutes, and down our legs to our knees, softening from our knees to our heels, all the way down through the tops and soles of our feet, all the way to the tips of our toes. Inviting ease along the lower half of the body. And the upper half now. 
opening the right side body. And the left side now. Finding ease along the right arm and left leg. Now the left arm and right leg. Feeling your whole body softening down. The whole of your body at ease. sense of ease and peace with us through the rest of our day, knowing that if we're practicing at home, we may wish to stay here even longer. Let's begin to gently reawaken our bodies, perhaps releasing our hands and creating motion through our fingers, inviting motion through our toes as well. And maybe we're walking or sliding our sitting bones slightly forward. Perhaps we're lifting one leg at a time and creating some motion through our knee and then hip joints. Perhaps floating hands to our thighs and adding some gentle motion in the form of cats and cows through the spine, awakening torso and shoulders. Let's return to a neutral spine with our shoulders over our hips, our ears over shoulders and bringing our hands back to Anjali Mudra, palms pressed together, thumbs resting in our hearts. Let's allow for our minds to return back to our sankalpa, our deep intention that we set at the start of class. Enjoying the sounds around you, or if you'd like to join me for one ceiling hum, let's inhale together now. Om Shanti Shanti Peace Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a beautiful day. Easy today. <laughs> Thank you all so much for